Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching Swipe. Stay with us to find out what we're doing in the middle of the English countryside with dogs. And it's nothing to do with hunting tech, I promise. Give a dog a drone. We're off on a mission with a search and rescue team using airborne technology. More flying robots to the rescue. We look at UAVs destined for emergency situations. And time is of the essence in our games review too this week. We've got a smartwatch special including titles to play on the new Apple Watch. Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week we're with the National Search and Rescue Dog Association in Kent. Now that might not sound very techy, but wait till you see the new drone they've been trying out. Every year in the UK, around 200,000 people are reported missing. So perhaps a little help from a UAV, that's an unmanned aerial vehicle, might make all the difference in some of those cases. Now, the team of volunteers here today have very kindly said we can join them on a mock rescue mission to see how the drone might work once they start to use it for real. And it all begins over there. James, what's happening right now? Well, we're running a, a training exercise today and we've got a missing person, a guy called Steve Holman, who's the local farmer here. Is he our pretend missing person? He's our pretend missing okay, person. Right. No one's really missing. Okay, that's good to know. Good to so know. Uh, we've set a scenario up for our guys because we're going to test some new technology out today on the search that we've been donated by O2. We found this guy's quad bike out in the lane. Right, and uh, so we've RV'd up here. What does RV mean? Rendezvous, so we've brought oh, okay. the team together to. This is where we all are now. Exactly. Okay. Now these guys will take a briefing. Right. We're then going to fly the drone, get a good look at the land. We want to see what kind of information it can give us about see, what so we see on the map. So they're looking at maps to, to where you think the missing person is. Yeah? What they've done on those maps, we, the search manager, Stuart, here has designed into search areas based on, some, based on lots of statistics we collect about okay. missing person behaviour. And what we want to do is validate with the drone that the map actually represents what we have here on the ground because hedgerows move, woodlands change, stuff grows, stuff gets cut down. So this looks intriguing, James. So this is the drone. This will give us a live video feed from above the search area. Also record in 1080p high definition, the same stuff you broadcast in on Sky. So we should be able to get some really good imagery from this. We can compare it to the mapping we've got in the van. We know exactly what it looks like today if there are any hazards out there, and we can take our resources and put the right resource in the right place to get the best result of finding this person. We're going to get it up high up in the air. We're going to leave it hovering, spin it around, get a good video of the area. We're going to bring it back. We're going to review the high-res video and make some decisions where we send our search guys to go looking. So I just go into the camera here, get to the SD card, pop it out, and hopefully that's the magic source that we're after on that that we're going to have a look at. Don't lose it on the way. It's pretty oh, small, isn't it? <laughs> Just drop the dome down a bit lower, and if I just move through the video clip... Oh, look, what was that? Trousers? A coat? That we're not sure, so what we need to do... I'll pause it there. We need to then send a team out to find out, is that relevant to our search? Is it our missing person? We've got this evidence of where this jacket was, so we've got some good clues. We're going to send the foot team, they're going to go recover that, search on the way, in person. Oh, it looks like the dog's found something behind us. She's just come back to the handler there. The dogs ever outrun the handler? All the time. The dog, <laughs> our dogs are trained on like something. That's happening now. They're trained on something called a refine. So the dog will go to the body, come back to its handler, alert. In Tess's case, it's a jump and a bark. Dog team one, this is Control. Send your message. Yeah, we've got code red. Uh, missile located. Uh, stand by for coordinates. Uh, it looks like we will need a stretcher team down here. In search and rescue, we have all this technology and all these tools, and it's about taking a really small resource and putting it in the right place to get the right result. Anything that helps us do that, drones, GPS, radios, statistics, anything. It's just another great step forward for us in how we can take new technology and actually get some real life-saving results from it. Well, thanks for showing us how it's all done. No problem. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, we find out if gaming on the new Apple Watch is any good or just a waste of time. Sorry, I couldn't help it. So the rescue mission was successful, but these guys aren't the only ones experimenting with flying robots in emergency situations. I've been taking a look at what else is out there. Swimmers have been given peace of mind on some of the beaches in Chile recently. A project there has seen the testing of drones carrying life preservers that can get to you before a lifeguard. 
In Norway, researchers have been trying out a flying robot to see how it could help rescuers in avalanche situations. The drone can spot body heat and fly in heavy winds. 30 minutes after an avalanche, the survival rate is only 30%. Such events can have deadly consequences, as we saw when last month's earthquake in Nepal triggered an avalanche on Everest. Now, anything flying through the air risks colliding with something. So here's one designed to be crash-proof, so it doesn't need to avoid obstacles in disaster situations. Its protective rotating cage means it just bounces off. We were thinking insects can reach places while flying that are impossible to reach with our current technology. And one of their key capability is to collide into things and continue flying, to survive collisions. And we wanted to reproduce these amazing capabilities with our drone. Another bot taking tips from nature is this flappy winged one from scientists at America's Stanford University. The wings mean it can fold up and move through difficult spaces. If there is a building collapse, then they no longer do you have a nice hallway that you can fly through. You're going to have uh, pieces of scrap that have just fallen everywhere. You aren't going to know where they are ahead of time to plan your path around them. And this bushfire in Australia was filmed using a UAV. Firefighters there have been testing how drone technology could help them. UAVs are already used by fire crews in America. It's pretty obvious how every second counts in emergency situations. And actually, time is something that's been on our minds quite a lot in the Swipe team recently. It must have something to do with all the hype around the Apple Watch launch and the growth of the smartwatch market as a whole, which is why this week, Guy Cocker has picked a few titles for your wrist in our games review. Spywatch is a new game for the Apple Watch, which has just been released a couple of weeks ago. And it's a novel concept. Obviously, the watch is a new kind of games console in a lot of ways. The idea is that you're running your agency and you send your agents out into the field and train them up. And every kind of few hours or so, you'll get a message from your agent. So you might get a message from your agent who's out in Paris saying, I'm at a guard post. Do I take the guy out or do I try and sneak past him? And you make that decision for him. It's kind of just this experience that comes through via no short notifications, much shorter than a tweet. A lot of people might find that a little bit intrusive coming through to their wristwatch all the time. But there's this weird thing that happens after a few hours where you start to actually believe that you do have these agents out in the field. Or maybe that was just me. Another game for the Apple Watch that I reviewed this week is uh, Watch Quest. And if the Spy Watch is an example of how to do a watch-based game effectively, then Watch Quest is an example of how to do it badly. But you send this uh, little guy out on a, on a quest. He goes wandering for, say, 30 minutes. And you have to keep checking in on him to make sure that he's fed, uh, fed effectively. You have to keep digging for gold. This feels like I'm having to go on my watch all the time and tap things. It's not really that fun or engaging. But it is free. So if you just bought an Apple Watch, it is free if you want to check it out. Apple Watch is not the only uh, watch technology in town. There's also uh, Android Wear, and there's a number of different Android watches out there. Some of the games that I've been playing on them are really good. One is called Bydot, and it's one of those kind of um, uh, puzzle experiences that you see a lot on mobile devices. It's frustrating, but very enjoyable while, while you're playing it, uh, separating these balls out into different uh, sections of this square. While it's a great game to play because it takes literally a few seconds to play a round of the game, your finger actually covers a good portion of the screen. It's one of those games that not quite there in terms of the watch, but really one of those experiences that you can dip into, and uh, I've been playing it a lot this week. Final game for, uh, for Android Wear is Swipe with a 3 instead of the E, which is an appropriate uh, game for this particular show. You're always swiping from one, one of the four sides of the watch screen, and you have to combine three or more colours to make them disappear. The swipe is actually a really kind of charming and nice experience. The only thing to say against it is that it's, uh, you have to pay for it. It's 99p, but it's not too much, and it works on both your Android phone and your Android watch device. Well, that's it for this week, but don't forget you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com, and our YouTube playlist. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>